Welcome to another edition of Tech Talk. My name is Aaron. I'm an electrician with Rainfront, and I'm also a certified Ranky technician. Uh, today we're going to go over one of the most common problems that happens with our pivots, um, and really any pivot out there, and one of the biggest frustrations for our growers is when they have a booster pump problem. Um, generally, they uh, don't know how to diagnose the problem. We get a lot of calls on there, and it's a very easy problem to be able to diagnose and to be able to fix. And today in this video, we're gonna kinda of do a two-part video. One is gonna be ruling out that the problem is not within the panel. And then the second one is gonna be ruling out um, if the, or finding out if the problem's in the booster pump box or in the booster pump motor itself. So first off, in any of our panels, um, generally, if there is a problem in the panel, we'd like for you to give us a call because it is a lot of sensitive electronics. Um, and just for warranty issues, and also just to be able to keep this stuff um, up, kept and well, give us a call. But I'm gonna show you a few steps on making sure that the problem isn't here. Um, first off, usually what happens is our growers will come out to the panel, they had it running for a while, and then all of a sudden it shut down, they come back, and there's usually a blown fuse within the 480 side um, of the disconnect. That's generally one of the, the most common things that we see on a booster pump problem is a blown fuse here on the 480 side. The reason why it blows it is because the motor out of the end is a 480 three phase motor. Um, the only thing that runs 480 three phase on the pivot is drive our drive motors and our booster pump motor. So generally what we like to do to be able to see if the problem is here or at the end of the system is we will replace that that uh, fuse here. And then what I do is I like to be able to take out this yellow wire. That yellow wire is our control circuit to our booster pump. Once I take that out, it will no longer trigger the booster pump to start up. And then we'll do a few tests on the inside of here to be able to um, see if the problem is here or down at the end of the system. Okay, now that we've gotten into this panel here, um, one of the most common things we see here is a blown fuse. Um, these pull out here. We just want to make sure that we pop out the old fuse. You can see we replace the new one with the same type, a CCMR 20 amp, and it has a little nub on the end that fits right into this section here. So make sure that you get the same type of fuse when we replace it. Pop that back in, and then we're going to slide it back into its holder here. Then, like I said earlier, we're going to go ahead and take out this yellow wire sure that we place it a wire nut on top and then I just like to be able to tuck it in the way so it doesn't make contact with any of the other wires and that just allows us to be able to take out the controls to the boost pump and allows us now to be able to do a little bit of troubleshooting on this panel to see where the problem lies all right now that we've got the fuse replaced and that yellow wire pulled what we're going to do here is I've got a Daniel here helping me. He's going to actuate the panel for us so we can do a few checks on uh, on our system here just to make sure that um, our panel is working correctly, that we're getting the output off the back side of this I.O. board. And then we can go ahead and find out if the problem is here or if we can rule out the panel and just move to the end of the system. So first of all, uh, we want to uh, start the pivot up. So Daniel is going to start the pivot on the front side in any direction, doesn't matter. You'll see a few of the LED lights come on. Um, it'll be a start front, a start output. It looks like he has it going in forward, and it looks like it already has the end gun LED illuminated. That will come on as soon as you, either you're in a sector of your end gun, or if you manually press the end gun icon on the front of this Advanced Plus um, panel. So first of all, to be able to see if this IO board is working correctly, we wanna just go ahead and put one of your probes and move your voltmeter here from off to voltage AC. Then we're going to take one of our probes and connect it to the neutral. And then we're going to take the other probe on the first port of this I.O. board on the, on the output side on the end gun. And if that end gun light is illuminated, we have that. It shows that we have... 117.8 volts. So that means that that IO board is working correctly. Now, the only other place that we want to check on here for voltage 
is back down here on this terminal. And this will be on the T12 terminal on the top side. We already took off the bottom side, the yellow. So we're gonna check on the top side. We're gonna put one of our, our leads here on the yellow, one on the white, and then we're gonna check once again for voltage. And it looks like we have 117.5 volts. So the panel here is working correctly. It's sending out the controls as we need it to be. Uh, so we can go ahead and rule out that the problem is not in here. Now, if we at any point do not get that voltage on either the IO board or down on the T12 terminal, then we know that we have a problem within the panel and you should contact one of your Ranky representatives to be able to come out and help service this. But since we have ruled this out, we're gonna move down to the booster pump box and continue our video. All right, here we are at the end of our system. Uh, we have a small little test pivot here in our office. And we're here at the uh, booster pump box. Now, a couple of things I just wanna go over to show you guys, you know, how the system works and then also how to troubleshoot it. Um, inside of our stack switch here, we have all of our, our tank conductor wires landed in here. Our yellow wire here on top, is the one that does control the booster pump. That's our 120 control voltage that's coming in here. On the back side, it runs straight over to this pressure switch. This pressure switch has to get pressure in order for, from the pivot in order for it to send that signal to a Honeywell relay, which then activates our auto reversing contactor for the booster pump. Some of the most common things that we find wrong with these systems are Either this pressure switch is not getting pressure from the pivot, meaning that there's either a clog in the line, that, uh, the pressure line coming from the pivot to here, or the pressure switch is bad, or somebody has messed with the PSI setting on the pressure switch. And that needs to be right around five pounds on there. And if you do need a new pressure switch, we do have those here. Um, they're you know very easy to be able to get and install, and you can just put the wires right back on how you found them. After the voltage leaves the pressure switch, if that is okay, then it comes over here to this Honeywell relay. This Honeywell relay um, just relays voltage from the forward and the reverse um, direction of the pivot. So if the, the pivot is running in reverse, then 120 volts comes off the back of the stack switch. And if there's pressure, it activates the coil of this Honeywell relay and then allows 120 volts to flow through the pink over here to this side of the auto reversing contactor in which it engages the motor. Same thing happens if it's moving in forward. So if it uses the purple wire, if there's pressure on this pressure switch, it sends control voltage to the Honeywell relay. This 120 volts is allowed to flow through and then it activates the coil of this side of the auto reversing contactor in which it then turns on the booster pump. So what I like to do first is I will always test the motor and I do this by pulling out the leads and I went ahead and loosened them up. And then I set my meter to ohms and generally with the tone, you can hear, okay? So if you get a tone, that means that there is zero resistance, okay? And when you ohm out the motor itself, between each phase, there should be a tone in there. Obviously, I don't have a motor on this side, but I'm showing you, you know, one lead can go to the black wire, one lead can go to the blue wire or to the red wire. You should have a little bit of resistance between the windings on a motor. And if you do not, that means you have an open winding and the motor needs to be replaced. Also, you can test it by taking any of your three leads and going to your ground lug. And if you have a tone there, that means you have a ground fault and that motor needs to be replaced. If we own this out and we find out that there's nothing wrong with the motor, that the problem doesn't lie within the motor, then we got to start looking at um, some of the components here. The things you want to look at first is you want to test out these contactors, make sure that you can actuate them correctly, both the forward and the reverse side. Sometimes these can get seized or fused shut and which if that happens and these contacts gone bad you would not be able to push in on uh, the gate here on either side and if that is the case then you need to replace this auto reversing contactor also sometimes this honeywell relay here in the back can start making a lot of noise and chattering 
That generally means you have a bad coil on the inside of that relay. And this also can be replaced and you just have to take the wires off, replace it with a new one and put the wires back on in the same place. And then also your pressure switch. If you're not getting pressure to this, it will not allow control volts to just go through. Or if the pressure switch is bad or if it's set wrong, it'll also make it so that control voltage does not go through your system. Uh, generally what we find is these components are pretty hardy. They do go out. We have had to replace them. But generally when we have a booster pump problem, it is the motor at the end of the system. And that just needs to be replaced um, out at the end of the system if it's uh, ranky. Some of the other models have them right over the C-Tower. And those motors are available from any of your ranky dealers.